The Beatles' Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band album, the album that would create a shockwave in popular music for decades to come. Arguably one of the greatest leaps in music in modern history, this album is considered a masterpiece, and for good reason. Today we're going to show you 10 very interesting facts about the Beatles' Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band album. Let's do this. Sgt. Pepper and the concept behind the album originated on Paul's flight back to London in 1966. The band was fed up with being the Beatles and all the pressure that came with their fame. Therefore, Paul got the idea that they should ditch those personas and take on new ones. He says the following explains his thought process. I thought, let's not be ourselves. Let's develop alter egos so we're not having to project an image which we know. It would be much more free. What would really be interesting would be to actually take on the personas of this different band. We could say, how would somebody else sing this? He might approach it a bit more sarcastically perhaps, so I had this idea of giving the Beatles alter egos simply to get a different approach. Then when John came up to the microphone, or I did, it wouldn't be John or Paul singing, it would be the members of this band. It would be a freeing element. I thought we can run this philosophy through the whole album. With this alter ego band, it won't be us making all that sound. It won't be the Beatles. It'll be this other band. So we'll be able to lose our identities in this. The album's cover art and production was very unique. It was designed by Peter Blake and Jan Howarth and consists of cardboard cutouts and wax figures of famous actors, gurus, scientists, and more. John even wanted Jesus and Hitler included in the crowd, an idea that was turned down because of the inevitable controversy that would ensue. The cover cost a total of 3,000 pounds, over 50,000 pounds in today's money, which made it the most expensive album cover to date in 1967. It typically cost 50 to 75 pounds to produce a cover. However, this was money well spent, as the Sgt. Pepper's album cover is one of the most iconic and recognizable in music history. Strawberry Fields Forever and Penny Lane were supposed to be on the Sgt. Pepper album. These were the first two songs the band started recording for the album, but EMI pressured them into releasing the songs as a double A-side single. Therefore, the tracks were left off the album. George Martin, the Beatles producer, has said that this decision was the biggest mistake of my professional life. Although they are just as iconic off the album, imagine what Sgt. Pepper would have been like if it had included these epic songs. Three songs off the album were banned by the BBC. A Day in the Life was banned because of the line, I'd love to turn you on, which the BBC thought encouraged drug use. Paul and John have mentioned that this line was meant to elicit a controversial reaction. Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds was banned because the BBC believed it was a reference to the drug LSD, although both Paul and John have denied this multiple times. Being for the benefit of Mr. Kite was banned because of the phrase Henry the Horse, because it combined two common slang terms for heroin. However, John denied that song was related to heroin at all. He did use it though, but... Although the album is loved by fans, some of the Beatles look back at the recording session with much less enthusiasm. It's hard to imagine the production of one of the greatest albums of all time as being dull, but this is exactly how George felt during the studio sessions. He says, a lot of the time it ended up with Paul just playing the piano and Ringo keeping the tempo, and we weren't allowed to play as a band so much. It became an assembly process, just little parts and then overdubbing. And so for me, it became a bit tiring and a bit boring. Ringo also recalls being bored. He was much less involved than everyone else and says he learned how to play chess while they were recording. John also had a slightly indifferent perspective about the album, specifically the songs he contributed. He was proud of A Day in the Life, but he says many of his other songs like Good Morning, Good Morning and Mr. Kite were just throwaways. Sgt. Pepper is responsible for many firsts in the music industry. It was the first album to include song lyrics on the album's sleeve cover, which is now very common. It was also the first album to forego gaps between tracks, called banding, making the album sound like one continuous song. And although highly debated, it is considered one of the first concept albums. Newspaper headlines were responsible for inspiring some of Sgt. Pepper's songs. Headlines from the Daily Mirror and the Daily Mail sparked the idea for Paul's She's Leaving Home and John's A Day in the Life. Paul saw a story in the newspaper about a girl running away from home and, coincidentally, had actually met the girl years ago on a TV show, although he was not aware of the connection. As for John, he says the following about his inspiration. 
I was writing the song with the Daily Mail propped up in front of me on the piano. I had it open to the news in brief, or whatever they call it. The concentric run-out groove, which is the loop that plays at the end of the record, has a very interesting story. The Beatles wanted a snippet of loud, unidentifiable noise to play on forever, or until someone lifted the needle off the record player. Barry Miles, who worked with the Beatles and was present for some of the Sgt. Pepper sessions, says the following about recording this piece. It was a triple session three three-hour sessions, which ended around 4 a.m. The Beatles stood around two microphones muttering, singing, snatches of songs, and yelling for what seemed like hours, with the rest of us standing around them, joining in. Some fans have theorized that there is actually a hidden message in this recording, and when played backwards, they hear multiple things. However, the strangest is definitely, we'll f you like Superman. which Paul has denied many times. Good, he should have. The album is rumored to have taken 700 hours to complete. Much of that time was spent figuring out the complex arrangements and rehearsing the songs, not necessarily recording. However, this was still an unheard of amount of time to work on an album for, even for the Beatles. For comparison, their first album, Please Please Me, took just under 10 hours to complete. Sgt. Pepper changed more than just music. On top of popularizing psychedelic rock and making it more mainstream, it had a huge social and cultural influence. It was the countercultural movement soundtrack, particularly during the 1967 Summer of Love, as it symbolized the hope and change that was occurring in social consciousness. It preached love, acid, spirituality, and more to the youth that was craving a more open and loving society. There has been no album since that has been such a significant impact musically or socially. And for this, we are forever grateful for the masterpiece that is Sgt. Pepper's. And speaking of gratitude, it takes a lot to make this channel work. Last year, a fan just like you named Leah Robbins reached out to me and asked if she could contribute to the channel, stating the fact that she was perhaps just as big of a fan of the Beatles and music like that and wanted to be part of this incredible project. Every video I post, you are all so appreciative and say such nice things. I'll never get used to how wonderful that makes me feel. So if you could, since this is Sgt. Pepper's and all, could you take the time to leave a comment sharing your gratitude to Leah instead of me? It'll take two seconds, but I assure you the meaning will last far longer. Thanks for watching everyone. See you next time.